Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Good morning, good afternoon. Mmm, that's a good mix. So, I wanted to make this video and talk about why I'm not quitting YouTube. Got a new bag review coming too. Let me just pull up a chair, settle in. Hope everybody's doing well. This video is not, by the way, for the haters, this video is not about my beard. Although it could be. Nor is it about carnivore. Although it could be. I love telling people about Jesus and carnivore. My beard, it just tells people about me on its own. All right, so maybe the haters have stopped watching by now. So anyway, um, I'm not quitting YouTube. And there's been a lot of videos out. I'm gonna uh, link to one by Marquise Brownlee. MK W, I, MKWHBD, I don't, sorry Marquise. And by the way, I have Marquise on my TV over here. Uh, I'm halfway through his VR, VR? I shouldn't say VR. Uh, his Apple, uh, it's the Apple VR headset. It's the dumbest thing I've, I think I've ever seen Apple put out. But anyway, hey, they're not paying me to not say this. I'm just not gonna walk around with one of those big things on my head, sorry. And I don't sit still long enough to sit and play a video game and pinch stuff in the air. So, anywho, that's not what this video is about. This video is about not quitting YouTube. I've been on YouTube since 2008 and really didn't start engaging with the platform until about 2010, uh, 15, 16, somewhere around there. And, and getting serious with it. But, I've, like I said, I've, I've just recently reached 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all very much. Mostly the carnivore community out there. I really started getting into YouTube by with some of my students uh, watching Casey Neistat and do his daily vlogs and, and, and all that stuff. And at the time, because I know what it takes to get into uh, or to do video editing and, and production and, and all that and create content, I, I thought to myself, this man's family must be suffering. Like his marriage, either they have a rock solid marriage and she's totally for this, talking about Casey's wife, or he's neglecting his family. And I think since then, Casey would say, yeah, it, he, he was neglecting his family. And so obviously he's pulled back to spend more time with his family. And I admire that. I admire the self realization like I'm, they're more important, the videos are not. I used to listen to a band called uh, Poor Old Lou, great guys, musicians, uh, from, the, from the 90s, early 2000s. And they weren't making it as a big band. And these were all young guys married with children. And they were like, you know what, we're not making it as a band, it's not paying the bills. We need to put this hobby or this dream aside and go provide for our families. And I, I totally admired that about them. They're like, they, they're like, hey, we're not a band anymore until we can be a band, but we need to go provide for our family. So I, I really just admire that. In response to uh, Marquise's video about YouTubers quitting um, or scaling back, he says in his video, and I'll, I'll post his video below, uh, that a lot of YouTubers are just kind of scaling back. And I've seen kind of a trajectory like with Peter McKinnon and Maddie, Maddie Hopoja, sorry, Maddie. Maddie's getting off of YouTube. Uh, he may come back someday, but he's getting off YouTube. You know, the, the level of content and value they provide in their niche is amazing. But uh, there's this kind of trajectory as, as the channel grows, they then can afford to plateau and then even step back and take time away. And it is a business, Marquise talks about it. It's a business to do this. I have a job, it's not my livelihood. I enjoy doing it. Um, and so I'm not quitting YouTube, uh, but um, I, I think a lot of YouTubers, young and even old, need to, whether it's any art, any art form whatsoever, it doesn't have to be YouTube. It could, you could be a painter, sculptor, um, if you're doing it at the detriment of the loved ones around you, then you should pull back. You should find that margin, pull back, especially if you're a, a husband or a wife and you're neglecting your family. Because in my mind, they come first. There's, there's, no, there's no job, there's no art or craft 
that I want to do that supersedes my responsibilities to my family or my desire to be with my family. Like I, I, <laughs> I sometimes joke, like I wish another pandemic could come through so I could spend time with my family, uh, more time with my family. And so I'm actually looking at ways for the next 20 years, just kind of planning the next 20 years, how can I be even more present and spend more time with my family and us do things together, road trips and things like that. Um, because I, I only get one shot at being a, um, a husband and a, and a father. Um, so anyway, um, I'm not quitting YouTube. Um, I'm not even scaling back. I actually might ramp it up a little bit. I have a little bit more margin in my schedule in my life where I could ramp up my YouTube presence. And um, I don't have a niche. I don't know that I've ever had a niche. An interesting um, side note, I'm a, I'm a painter at heart, so I went to school for graphic design and painting. And in my senior gallery exhibit, <clears throat> when I sat down with my professors, they said, each painting that you've done by itself is an amazing painting. You're a gifted, you're talented, blah, 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 accolade, accolade, accolade. That's fine. But the problem was that they couldn't look at two or three paintings and go, that's a major chism. To them, they wanted to see some sort of consistency. Like when you see a Van Gogh, you know it's a Van Gogh. When you see a, a, a Rembrandt, you know it's a Rembrandt. Picasso, so on and so forth. But they couldn't look at the whole of my body of work and say that this is a major chism. You can take that critique however you want it. I took it as positive feedback. Like I pushed myself in each painting, not to necessarily recreate a style or mimic a style, but for that painting, that was my style. For that next painting, that was this style that I was going for. So I haven't found my niche in YouTube, um, whatever that is. I, I don't do a ton of reviews. I got a really cool North Face bag recon review that's, that I'll be doing. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's, there's a bazillion of them out there on YouTube already. Uh, I, I'm gonna do it a little different, but we'll see. I, I, I don't do reviews, I don't game, I don't, do, I do some tech reviews. I do a ton, I've done a ton recently on carnivore and education and, and things like that. But I just do what I find interesting, like building a chicken coop. I did a ton of research and built a chicken coop. Would I love for YouTube to be my full-time job? Absolutely. I personally don't think I'm that interesting. <laughs> but if, if there are people out there that do, then fantastic, great. Thank you. I do think I have a glorious beard. But other than that, I'm not quitting YouTube. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it for the, the, the accolades. I'm honestly, in the back of my mind, I'm in it for the, the posterity. I want people, if YouTube's around in 100 years, to come across my channel and go, whoa, check out this guy's beard. Hey, he built a chin coop. That, that's cool, you know? That's it. And for my family, like my great grandchildren, be like, that's our great granddad. Look, look at what he was doing. For me, that, that, that's part of it. Would I love to make Peter McKinnon and Casey Neistat money off YouTube? Absolutely, absolutely. One of the things I, I, I think that literally hinders me from doing that um, is I, I don't have a niche. It's just me. I am my niche, I guess. I don't know. I'm nicheless. Call me nicheless. Look through my catalog and tell me what I should be doing more videos about. And with that said, I, I, I have ideas for videos. Spoiler alert, I stopped drinking a few years ago. I'm gonna do a video about that and I'm gonna do it well. Like I'm gonna go shoot some B-roll and, and do all that, not just a talking head sit down. Hey, I got a few minutes before I eat lunch. What else? So with that being said, uh, my family, my wife and my daughter and my dog and our six chickens are probably the most important thing in my life. And me locking myself away doing a video or doing something like that just doesn't make sense to me. As a YouTuber, if I can call myself that, I, I, they're, they're first, they're priority. Then work, friends, 
church, and then making videos. So I don't put out a ton of content all the time. I don't put out weekly. I don't put things out. Sometimes I go a month without doing a video. I think that hinders my channel from growing because I don't put out a ton of content. Would I love for YouTube to be my full-time job? Absolutely, that'd be fantastic. And I think YouTube needs to make, make it more feasible for smaller channels to do stuff. And I, I recently just took a survey on YouTube about, about that very thing. Like, let us put up a Teespring merch if you're over a thousand subscribers. And just, just loosen up some of those things so that we, we, we could make 50 bucks a month, extra 100 bucks a month, whatever, whatever and let us, let us run that like a business. So let me wrap this up because it's already longer than I had anticipated it being. YouTubers, your family should be first. It's okay to push the camera away, put the camera away, don't record everything. I'm of the opinion, not everything needs to be shown, recorded, shared with the world. I, was, I got off social media uh, last year. It was amazing. I think some of the most special moments, whether you record them or not, they don't need to be shared with the world, but that they're not shared. They're just, they're in here, they're in your mind, they're memories that you make and you don't share with the world. Yeah, so YouTubers, give yourself some grace. Back away from the camera, put it away. I love it when, so there, I'll, I'll, I'll mention a YouTuber. I know, I know nothing about him except that he makes wonderful videos and they're not every week. They're every, maybe once a month, maybe twice a month. Uh, I'll mention his channel, Hacksman. Hacksman puts out these fun videos. His family's included in them. And they just do some fun, like homesteading kind of type videos. And he's, he's funny. Like we have kind of the same sense of humor. And, and I love it when I get a notification, Hacksman's got a new video. And it's been a, a week or two or a month. And I'm like, oh, I, need to make sure I go watch that because that anticipation builds. I would prefer to follow someone who isn't always constantly putting out content because then I just, I, that gets lost in the minutia of all the other stuff that, that's going on and then I forget and stuff like that. I forget to go back and watch the, the content. I say all that to say, I ain't quitting YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm on YouTube. I'm not going anywhere, but I'm not one of those YouTubers that's gonna just destroy my relationships frustrate my family, record everything all the time just to get content out. I'll put content out when Yeti pays me a million dollars to promote their work. I'm just kidding. I bought this myself. Subtle ad. All right, guys, thanks for watching. It's not a carnivore video, although I am down from 235 to 204. My goal is to be below 200 by my birthday, which is coming up in February. North Face Recon bag review after I've used it for a little bit and why I quit drinking a few years ago. Alcohol, alcohol. I'm drinking the mess out of some coffee and some water. It may or may not be related to carnivore. You'll have to check back and see. Thanks guys, see y'all soon. And roll the beard. <laughs> see, Marquise Brantley. MKBWHD, MKBHD, MK, MKBHD? M-W-K-B-H-D, Marquise Brown Lee, M M B K B H D. Peace, brother. <laughs>